Paris is the regional hub for northwestern British Columbia and provides year-round recreational opportunities. At the junction of the Skeena and Kitsum-Kalem rivers, Terrace was originally the site of a Simshian village. Fur trading and gold prospecting were the principal activities along the Pacific shore, including the Skeena area, from 1770 to 1900. In the early 1890s, a steamboat route was established on the Skeena as far as Hazelton. Tom Thornhill settled near what is now known as Little Canyon, south of the Skeena. In 1905, George Little staked his preemption across the Skeena River and bought land in what is now known as Terrace. Seeing a future for the area, he gave land to the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway, resulting in a railway station in Terrace. Terrace was incorporated in 1927, and until the Second World War, existed as a sawmill community. The population of Terrace in 1951 was 350 people. In the early 50s, Terrace began to serve as a distribution center for the new town of Kitimat and became an important wood processing center with the establishment of the Canadian Cellulose Company. Terrace was once known as the Cedar Pole Capital of the World. More than 50,000 poles were manufactured annually to supply many parts of North America with telephone and electric power poles. The world's tallest pole at 50 meters or 162 feet was cut in Terrace. It currently stands in New York City. The first aircraft landed at Terrace in July of 1933. A Belanca CH300 pacemaker, powered by a Wright J5 engine, had flown from New York. It was on a rescue mission for Jimmy Mattern. Mattern was making his second attempt to set a record on an around-the-world flight in an easterly direction. His Lockheed Vega, sponsored by the Standard Aviation Oil Company, had left New York on June 3, 1933, crossing the Atlantic with a landfall in Norway, then on to Moscow and across Siberia, planning to land in Nome, Alaska. Poor weather forced him to turn around. His Pratt & Whitney Wasp engine began losing oil pressure he was forced to land on the Siberian tundra. Mattern waited more than two weeks with his damaged Vega until rescued by a group of Inuit. Mattern was then picked up by a Soviet aviator who flew him to Nome in a Russian flying boat. Meanwhile, in New York, the Mattern Relief Expedition was organized, sponsored largely by the King's Brewery of New York, with pilot William Alexander and two air mechanics. On July 5, 1933, with no knowledge of the route ahead, Alexander flew a Belanca from Edmonton westbound, making fuel stops at Jasper, Prince George, and Smithers. He then turned northward at Hazelton, intending to follow the old telegraph line toward Telegraph Creek. The flight ran into low cloud and fog in the mountainous passage. Alexander turned back to follow the Skeena River to the coast. Circling over Prince Rupert, they hunted for a place to land the Belanca. Believing the aircraft to be in trouble, 
City authorities cleared the main street for a possible emergency landing. However, Alexander decided to fly east again and arrived at Terrace. He selected a hayfield and made a good landing on bench land belonging to the Frank Brothers Dairy. At this time, the group did not know Mattern was down in Siberia. But after days of waiting for better weather, the message came, Mattern was in Alaska. The expedition arranged to ride the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway gas speeder to Prince Rupert where two members of the group got a ride in a float-equipped Yunkers bound for Juneau. In Juneau, they chartered an Alaska Southern Airways Lockheed Vega. It took them to White Pass and Burwash in the Yukon, then to Nome. They picked up Mattern and returned via Juneau, arriving the evening of July 25th. Later, the group flew to Terrace, landing the Vega on Lake Elts Lake. Mattern was taken by car back to the Frank Brothers Hayfield as there was concern about the takeoff at the field. The Vega then flew to Hazleton with the expedition. Mattern alone flew the Balanca to the field at Hazleton as it was believed that this location would better accommodate the takeoff of the loaded Balanca. Terrace pioneer Don Cooper recalls that prior to the Balanca's takeoff, it had been arranged that the Frank Brothers Dairy would cut the hay in the field, take out two fences, and cut down trees in the departure path. Mattern was then able to depart the Terrace field without incident. The Balanca flew to Prince George and eventually to Toronto, where the group was met by another Vega, which the Standard Aviation Oil Company had painted to match the aircraft down in Siberia. In this new aircraft, Mattern returned to New York, where he received a tumultuous welcome. When Mattern got his pilot license, it was endorsed by Orville Wright. When Neil Armstrong, a friend of Mattern, went to the moon, he took Mattern's license with him. It was inscribed, quote, Carried to Tranquility Base, Moon, Apollo 11, July 16th to 24th, 1969, unquote. It was signed by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. The airport at Terrace was completed in 1943 by contractors to the Department of National Defense as part of the Home War Establishment. A photographic survey of the Terrace area had been completed the previous September. An RCAF Norseman was used, flown by Flight Sergeant George Williamson, accompanied by a photographer. They landed at Lake Elts Lake on September 23rd and pitched a tent near an old fisheries wharf. The RCAF had created a second line of defense at the lake and had stationed a corporal and two airmen to guard the fuel cache and ammunition dump hidden in the bush near the shore. The small detachment lived in a forestry cabin and had a telephone line to the forestry office in Terrace. The Lake Elts Lake Detachment coincided with orders given to No. 7 Bomber Reconnaissance Squadron at Seal Cove in Prince Rupert. They were ordered, in the event of an attack, to fly their float-equipped Blackburn Shark aircraft to the lake and disperse them along the shoreline. A number no. seven bomber reconnaissance air gunner, John Moyes, tells of a shark flight he was on with Flight Sergeant Jerry McKenna. On returning to the coast from patrol, they encountered dense fog, 
but we're able to find the mouth of the Skeena River. The patrol continued up the river in the fog and made a safe landing at Lake Elts Lake. At the landing site, they discovered plenty of fuel and a dilapidated cabin with a food cache, cans of pork and beans, and stale coffee. They sat out the weather for three days. Moyes recalls that it was a nice holiday, except for the effect of the diet of beans. After the completion of RCAF Station Terrace, two squadrons were stationed here. Number 135 Fighter Squadron Hurricanes were based here from November 1943 to March 1944. Number 149 Bomber Reconnaissance Squadron's Vega Venturas were on site for roughly the same time. The squadron's last patrol from Terrace occurred in February 1944 in a Vega Ventura. For a few days in late June 1944, a Bomber Reconnaissance Squadron detachment was stationed at Terrace on exercises with the unit's Ventura GR MK4 aircraft. In November 1944, due to heavy losses in Canadian infantry units in Europe, the Canadian government reluctantly approved an overseas posting of Army conscripts who had signed on for home front duties only. Known as the Zombies, this group was supported by certain political and religious leaders. Similar incidents occurred across the country, but the worst was a terrace. 1,600 men of the 15th Infantry Brigade seized arms and mutinied, taking control of the Army camp on November 25th and 26th, 1944. On November 28th, the Brigadier Commander requested assistance from the RCAF to demonstrate to the mutineers that force was at hand. Western Air Command dispatched a number of Lockheed Vega Venturas from No. 8 Bomber Reconnaissance Squadron and based them at Smithers, should the situation get out of hand. The aircraft were unarmed. An accompanying Dakota DC-3 transported ground crews and munitions. However, the following day, the 15th Brigade senior officers were able to regain control. There were 1,284 officers and men at the station in 1945. And at the end of the Second World War, the RCAF turned over operation of the Terrace Airport to the Department of Transport in 1946. A temporary license for day operations only was issued in April of that year. A permanent license followed in July 1947. In May 1946, the Terrace Flying Club purchased a Tiger Moth from the War Assets Disposal Corporation. The club sold the Moth in March 1948. The electric flame path used by the RCAF was discontinued and winter maintenance was also discontinued in 1949. In May 1951, Russ Baker's Central BC Airways began its first scheduled service from Terrace to Prince George. The airline acquired an 11-passenger Second World War Avro Anson for the service, flown initially by Harry Taylor. On the inaugural flight, Baker and his wife Madge went along to take care of dignitaries and the press. Canadian Pacific Airlines also began scheduled service in 1951. At the same time, winter maintenance resumed and the airport was again licensed for night operation. Until 1955, 
all three segments of the runways were used. In 1961, two runways were deemed unusable and only one remained active. Northwest Regional Airport, YXT, is located on Bristol Road, three nautical miles south of Terrace. The airport also serves Kitimat, which is 56 kilometers to the south, and the Nass Valley. The airport is owned and operated by the Terrace Kitimat Airport Society.